Hello. I'm going to read a story called The Three Princes of Serendip. And in this video, you'll get chapter one. Um, and there are some illustrations. I will try to show you the illustrations as they come up the best that I can. So, without further ado, The Three Princes of Serendip by Elizabeth Jameson Hodges from a Persian folktale that is many centuries old. Chapter 1 The Stern Decree And here we have a picture of a king whom you will meet in just a few moments. The Stern Decree Long, long ago in a land far off at the end of the earth there lived a great ruler whose name was Jaya. His was the island kingdom of Serendip, where tall trees grew on emerald mountains, rich farms flourished, and lotus blossoms delighted the eyes of men. Early in his reign, three sons were born to Jaya, and on the day each entered the world, a strange bird with golden wings and eyes like fire dipped low out of the sky. It was seen, however, by only a handful of children in a mountain valley near the ancient and holy peak of great serenity. They were looking up and exclaimed with joy at the marvelous sight. The other people did not raise their eyes because they were laughing and feasting on sweet carabath and plump reddish plantains. Jaya missed it too, for although he rejoiced in his sons, he had many burdens which made his head bend low with anxiety. In his day the land was bountiful, but it had not always been so. The rains which fell upon his realm came chiefly in a single season, and once vast stretches of the country for many months each year had been dry and uncomely. And so they might have remained, had not Jaya built immense tanks as large as lakes. When great downpours drenched the earth, these reservoirs filled so high that there was fresh water for all the people, their farms, and flowers. The king was constantly concerned to see that his royal officials attended to the repair of the great tanks, and also kept the thousands of canals that wound between them unclogged. The ruler of Serendip knew that were it not for his vigilance, some who were charged with the care of these waters might easily grow fat and neglectful. Then distress and suffering would walk into his kingdom. Since the demands of his throne were so great, and because Jaya knew that he could not rule forever, he pondered deeply the matter of education for his three sons. Virtue, wisdom, and science, these he wished them to learn, in order some day to be worthy rulers themselves. Therefore, being a wise man, he asked even wiser men than he of his own country and of other lands to come and teach them. Very few from abroad dared approach his island realm, However, because great dragons, monsters of the sea, inhabited the wide ocean lanes around the land of Serendip. Many times Jaya had invited famous storytellers and philosophers to his kingdom, but more often than not, they, out of terror, had refused to come. And even now, when he urged renowned teachers of the world to visit him, that they might help to instruct his royal sons, only a very few dared to cross the infested seas. These, it was clear, were not only wise, but full of courage, so the king of Serendip welcomed each with high honors and many civilities. During the years of study, no one disturbed the young princes or their teachers. Day after day the lessons continued, until at last the royal brothers had grown to full height and seemed ready to be called men. Then Jaya summoned their instructors to ask how much his sons had learned. Wearing a garment of white silk, the king received the teachers with royal courtesy in the hall of state of his palace at An Anuradhapura. Here, while musicians of the court played upon their flutes and drums, he bade the philosophers speak. O oh, noble king, the oldest teacher said, raising his voice to be heard more clearly above the music. The royal princes have been well instructed in religion, grammar, and the management of elephants. Your Majesty's first son, Prince Balakrama, excels in logic and has an absorbing interest in all living things. Your second royal son, Prince Vijayo, is skilled in science and is a lover of the arts. As for Prince Rajasinga, Your Majesty's third son, he is full of courage, yet a man of peace and knowing in government. 
Besides this, they are all proficient in languages, poetry, and music. Now that last is a good thing, said Jaya, frowning because a flutist had just played a wrong note. Then, with a little smile in his eyes, he nodded for the teacher to continue. No one, however, the philosopher said with a low bow, can be more aware than your noble self of the many difficulties to be overcome in the ruling of Serendip. So it is our judgment that the royal princes should perfect their education by traveling abroad. This counsel seemed good to Jaya, but he wished to test his sons himself in order to hear with his own ears how wise they were and how ready to learn abroad. So he called them one by one and addressed each separately. Balakrama came first, riding upon Kandula, his favorite elephant. Caparisoned with splendid trappings of red and gold, the creature bore the prince to the royal palace. There the young man dismounted swiftly, and pausing only long enough to stroke Kandula gently on his great trunk, hurried within and bowed before the king. My son, Jaya said, as you can well see, I am growing older with every day. My time of strength may not be long, and this land must not be left without a ruler. Therefore, looking toward the future, I now offer you the government of this kingdom. Keep the teachings of Buddha ever in your heart, and strive for the tranquility and contentment of all our people. Saying these words, Jaya raised the crown from his head as if he were about to place it on that of his oldest son. Balakrama was amazed. However, he was a prince with sharp eyes, and he could also see with his heart. He noticed that when the king lifted the crown, he still held it tightly in his own fingers. So he answered, I am honored, sir, that your majesty should have so great a trust in me, and I am grateful for your noble counsel. If an ant, however, should come up out of his nest, would he be fit to govern this vast realm? Compared to your majesty, I am only a tiny ant without strength and practice. Always I have tried to follow your royal wishes, but in this instance I beg to be excused. The king rejoiced in the modesty and sense of those words, but he was careful not to show his pleasure. Instead, he kept a solemn expression as he let Balakrama go and sent for Vijayo. This prince, with a little sigh, put down the scroll he was reading at the moment and hastily presented himself with a low bow before the king. To his second son, Jaya made the same offer, and in doing so stood up as if to allow the youth to sit in his place upon the throne. Vijayo, a prince with keen ears, who could also hear with his heart, noticed that the king's voice was far from feeble. Besides, he felt sure that his father would be happy to rule until the end of his days. He said, therefore, Your majesty is both generous and wise. I, however, am like a drop of water which may disappear in the heat of the day or be merged with his fellows in the vast seas of your dominions. Besides, I am only your majesty's second son and have an older brother. So with deep respect, I beg to decline your royal offer. The king was delighted by the reply of Prince Vijayo, but he took pains not to show his approval and called for his third son. When the summons reached Rajasinga, he was visiting a court of justice, but he hurried to the king and bowed low. Jaya addressed him in the same way he had spoken to his brothers. Now the youngest prince had a brave heart as well as a brave mind. He listened and was astonished. Then, although he felt that the king might be displeased if his offer were not accepted, Rajasinga spoke his own thoughts freely. O oh, noble king, he said, is it wise for one so young to accept a dignity so large? I know of no heat greater than the sun. Also, I believe that no one can govern our country so well as your majesty. Besides, I am only a third son and have two older brothers. Pray, allow me to refuse. Jaya was pleased beyond measure because each of his three sons had proved himself to be a prince of both modesty and wisdom. Nevertheless, the king did not permit the expression of his face to show the deep sentiments of his heart, nor did he deem it fitting to bestow upon his sons honor, riches, or power. Instead, like their wise teachers, he decided the princes were now ready to perfect their education by travel in the great world, and at the, and at the same time to undertake the solution of one of the most serious problems that plagued his kingdom. So, the very next day he called them to him again. Believing that they might be too happy in Serendip to wish to leave, and knowing because of the love he bore them that his own will in the matter might otherwise weaken, he spoke with sternness. 
Wisdom, he said, is deeper than the sea. So you have much to learn before you are ready to become great rulers. Therefore, I command you to leave Anuradhapura in no more than seven days, and to quit the land of Serendip within fifteen. You are to travel through the heights, the valleys, and the great beyonds of the world in order to gain the character and wisdom and the right to rule. And more than this you are to do. In some dismay, but keeping silent, the three princes stood before their father. Ancients have said, Jaya continued, that once the mists of yesterday were marvelously distilled into a magic formula. This was written in one hundred lines of verse upon a single scroll named Death to Dragons. These lines contained the secret of a potent liquid which, if poured into an ocean lane, could utterly destroy upon the instant all dangerous monsters there. The princes had not heard of this before, and were filled with wonder and excitement. Had we that formula, Jaya said, though its words may be obscure and difficult, I believe that we could possess the mixture it describes. Therefore, my sons, I command that in your travels you search out this magic poem, that we may rid our shores of all the dragons that have plagued us for so long. Moreover, continued Jaya, you are expressly charged not to return without my permission. Only if you acquit yourselves in a worthy manner will you be allowed to walk once more in the land of Serendip. Therefore, send me word of your adventures, and let me know where my messengers may find you. But until you clearly merit royal power, it is not fit that you should look upon my face again. The princes were young and liked the thought of travel, but they also had a deep affection for the king, and felt uneasy about leaving him in so sudden a manner, and under so stern a decree. Hopefully they asked for a larger time in which to make ready for their journey, but Jaya refused to change his order, and quickly turned about to hide his tears as his three sons took their leave. After this, with heavy hearts and anxious thoughts, the brothers made ready to depart. They took assumed names and put on garments of plain white cotton, so that they would not appear as princes. Balakrama bade farewell to his mighty Kendula, and the three brothers rode upon other elephants with no elaborate trappings. So simply did they travel that they could easily have been taken for young Mahouts, charged with the care of the elephants rather than for the sons of a king. As they departed through the city, they passed a nine-storied monastery with brazen roof and the great gold dust dagoba, which protected sacred relics. Shaped like a giant bell, the latter was strewn with thousands of bright flowers, the gifts of worshippers. Leaving Anadapura, the brothers went on a, on a way that took them north and west towards the shores of the sea. Never, they thought, as they rode along, had Serendip seemed more serene, never more beautiful. In the morning sunlight fell on the red and yellow blossoms of tall flame trees that grew on either side of the way. At night, moonflowers opened, and the air was fragrant with jasmine. Balakrama rejoiced in the beholding clusters of white dove orchids, which, like the flights of small birds, could be seen here and there in the forests. Vijayo stopped to listen to the songs and 